What's up, everybody? What's up, Tim? What's up, Shooty? RJ, Caleb, hey. what's up, man? James, what's up, y'all? Okay, so we have 10 people right now. We'll probably have about another five, another, another 10. Um, guys, we have a real, real big treat here, okay? So we have um, – everyone here is in, in the health and fitness space. We're studio owners. We're, we're box owner, big box gym owners. We're independent PTs. Um, we have people in Tennessee. We have people in New York City. We have people in Cali and, and everywhere around. Man, I could tell you, like, for me, working as a marketer in the fitness space, dude, being from California, like, this is one of the premier rising stars in our space, definitely on the West Coast, okay? And I'm talking about Miguel, okay, our guest today, Miguel Aguilar. Miguel Aguilar is the owner, founder. Miguel, do you call yourself CEO? Yeah, I'm the CEO. Okay, so he's the CEO of Self-Made Training Facility, and I think you guys have, what, 20 locations right now? We have 21 locations, 18 of them are open. The other uh, are under construction or in the process of finding their building. I got you. So this guy here, his story, man, is, is abandoned, homeless, and broke. Okay, so this dude's like, like a, what, what were you, like 16, 17 years old, living in his car, yep. a student, athlete, uh, state-ranked wrestler, working, uh, graveyard shift, and and – you know, having some success, having some wins, having some disappointments. And, and, and now he's, you know, doing his thing with self-made training facility. I could keep going, but uh, Miguel, man, who are you, man? And welcome, brother. Good to see I you, man. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate the invite. And then, uh, uh, yeah, just uh, one of those things where <clears throat> being an athlete, you know, since the, the age of about eight or nine, I've been wrestling. So I've always had that mentality in the that, that blood in me of, of competing so I've always done really well and excelled in the things that I actually commit to uh, and become super successful at it but then the same token have uh, developed these skills from you know a lot of my setbacks if it wasn't for my setbacks I probably wouldn't be having this conversation with you guys today uh, I always look at those as a, an advantage in my life and a disadvantage in my life um, and everybody has them, you know, it's just what you do with them to really be able to, uh, evolve and, and create something amazing out of those setbacks. You don't know quite what it is in the, in the heat of the moment or in the moment in itself, but within transition and then the proper actions to overcome those setbacks then it, things become into fruition. So, but yeah, I built, you know, self-made training facility out of my garage. I started, uh, me and my wife started this concept out of my garage uh, I just got out of bankruptcy. I, I um, so basically what happened is I, I got into real estate right after uh, working as a commercial plumber. This was in 2003, and in real estate, uh, super successful in it. Made my first million when I was 27 years old. Don't have a college education. Barely graduated high school. Uh, like uh, Michael saying, I you know I was abandoned by my mom when I was 12. Uh, by the time I was 16, I was homeless. I was living out of my car. Uh, my father. Uh, where my mom dropped us off with my father within you know a few years after dropping us off uh, He committed a crime that landed him in prison for 22 years So my stepmother kicked me out because she couldn't afford to keep us and plus she didn't like us You know, we, were, we weren't her kids and the crime that he committed really kind of hurt the family So she pretty much packed our stuff and said hey, you guys got to figure it out So at the age of 16 being in the system before I decided not to let that uh, define me and my brother so I packed our shit in the car, got in the car, uh, and, and made it work. You know, slept in alleyways. I would shower at Bally Total Fitness. Uh, luckily, I, I was a wrestler, and my wrestling team was like my family. So I kind of, you know, went from friend to friend to friend. And then finally, my assistant wrestling coach uh, asked his dad if I can go ahead and sleep on their floor while I got on my feet. So Chris Gillespie, uh, my assistant wrestling coach, got me into his door and provided a home for me for the first six months. Uh, uh, at, well, six months living on my own out of my car. Six months thereafter, I had a full-time job working graveyard my senior year in high school, and I had my own apartment by the end of my senior year. So barely graduated. Uh, and then from there, got into commercial plumbing. Uh, I hated it. It just wasn't for me. Construction, I love building things, but I just couldn't deal uh, with uh, the way things would be run in, in, in the construction field. I was working to become a apprentice from apprentice, to, I mean, a journeyman to an apprentice to form into eventually owning my own construction company. So by the time I got to my journeyman's, I was in my process of uh, becoming a foreman. But 
in that same token, I had people above me that didn't want me taking their position. So working underneath these people, they would uh, uh, basically let me do all the manual work, all the manual labor. And I, right. at that point, I was not going to let somebody else control my, my life. Uh, and I bitched about my job a lot back then. I, I, I would complain everywhere I could. Uh, if someone asked me how my day was, I'd tell them it was shitty because I was doing this at this desert, working at this job site with this individual. And, and Miguel, you're, you're like in your early 20s at this point, right? Yeah, and, I was, and from the age of 18, 19 to about 22, uh, 23. And in that same token, at that point, I, I was over it. And when I did complain, I was, uh, I was always, uh, I was dating this girl. She, uh, her father would always invite us over for, for dinner. And then this girl's father was an actual real estate agent, a broker. He was a big way. He, he made a lot of money and he was very successful at it. And then from there, uh, every time I'd come over for dinner, of course, you know, the conversation at their table, how was your week? How was your job? How's this? How's that? And I would bitch and talk shit every time. After three or four times of doing that, he finally told me to shut the F up. And, and what am I going to do about it? And I've never heard this man curse before. So it caught my attention. And I was like, well, what do you mean? Was, was, it, was like, this well, dude successful? Was, 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 this guy, was this guy successful? Oh, super successful. Also, he knew. He's like, dude, you're, this is bullshit. This is lies. Yeah, 100%. So at that point, he was like, hey, you know, what are you going to do about it? And I, I, I looked at him and I was like, well, I have no college education. I barely graduated high school. I don't know what else to do. I have no other qualifications or skill sets. And he says, you're wrong. And I was like, you need to sell real estate. And I was like, what do you mean? I was like, what is real estate? Well, he started explaining it. As he's explaining this to me, yeah. I'm visually seeing what this man has. He has the nice car. He has a nice home. His family's well put together. The guy is as legit as it can get. Right. So obviously, if this man's telling me I should do real estate and I want his life, I was like, all right, where do I sign up? No questions asked, you know? Right. So from there, I took my online courses, passed my real estate test. Within six months, closed two deals, was equivalent to one year's pay as a plumber, made $62,000 off of two transactions. After that, I told my foreman, didn't even give a two-week notice, told him to go fuck off, and then I never looked back. Um, from there, opened up my real estate brokerage within two years of being licensed. I owned Realty World and Associates. And at this point, you got to take a, a poor kid from Riverside, yeah. no money, no household, no family, no, you know, no, no family whatsoever, no parents. Um, everything I've learned was kind of on my own and the people around me that I, I kind of mimicked. Um, I wasn't really educated. So you give a lot of, you know, a young kid a lot of money. Of course, what do I go do? Go blow it. Go do stupid shit with it. And at that point, by the time I was 27, I made my first million dollars. And at that point, I thought I was the king of real estate. Oh, hell yeah. You know, I had a successful real estate office, but then I drove that office to the ground with my pride and ego. By 2012, I made some really stupid investments in commercial. I had a filed a bankruptcy in 2012, which the most humbling and embarrassing thing at the same time. But I... I yep, yeah, because at this point, man, at this point, you came from nothing, but you've already, like, you've already made it. So probably... Correct. You, you're, like, yeah. you're, the dude. you're like Miguel's a guy and then like probably you know the skies have parted you know everything's beautiful and it's like damn bankruptcy correct okay. That's man, tough, man. I was so embarrassed and so prideful that I didn't even go meet the bankruptcy attorney at his office I had yeah. him meet me at a Starbucks I said hey I'm not walking into your office I don't want people seeing that I have to do this right like, meet me at a Starbucks damn um Ended up going through the whole process, gave everything back. They ended up keeping some of my real estate assets. And, and, and I basically wiped my hands and said, okay, moving on. In that same token, after we finally got discharged in 2012, December of 2012, we were accustomed to life. Uh, at that point, I was already married. I had two beautiful, I have two beautiful daughters. They're about three and four at that age at that time. And I ended up uh, uh, having my wife come to me and say, hey, look. She was a personal trainer, so I was, hey, why don't we train people out of the garage to make ends meet until we get back on our feet? So I was like, yeah, that's a no-brainer, you know? So I ended up, uh, I have a bunch of classic cars. I have 59 Impala, Chevy, uh -huh. yeah, a bunch of cool classic cars, right? Uh, Ragtop with the LS3, I mean, totally decked out cars. And um, put those in storage, and then I went on Craigslist. I bought this whole equipment package for $5,000 on, on, on Craigslist, a commercial-grade equipment uh, package. And we put it in the garage, but even then, I've always had the attention to detail. Like, I build cars, I'm really into art, tattoos, all that stuff, right? So the attention to detail, even in my garage, I didn't cut no corners. 
I yeah. boxed the floors, I put the mirrors up, I painted everything one color, I put our surround sound system in it. I wanted it to be welcoming for the individual coming to train with my wife. Okay. So my wife started training out of the garage. Well, next thing you know, she's blowing up. She got voted best personal trainer in the Inland Empire Magazine. I see her school. She's transforming people's lives. Things are, you know, looking up and up. I'm still selling a lot of real estate at that point. I go back into just being independent and running my own show. So within a year. What, what year is this, Miguel? What year is this? That, How long ago was this? Like five years ago? 2013. Yep. Gotcha. 2013. Okay. So 2000, December of 2012 is when we got discharged from our bankruptcy. Yep. And then 2000, uh, January of 2013 is when we started reestablishing our life. Gotcha. So that's where my wife said, hey, let me help with the household. Let me do this. And I'm all for it because we, you know, we, we wanted our, our life back. And we knew right. we had, you know, we knew that bankruptcy was not going to define us. I've right. been at the bottom before. So for me, it was like, hey. We're going to go ahead and move forward, learn yeah. from our mistakes, and then yeah. move forward and see what we can do next. And nowhere did we have the whole self-made training facility involved just yet. Okay. We had personal training out of the garage. We're based on service. We did everything different of everybody else. She outgrew that, that, that garage gym, which if you go to my Facebook account and you go to my uh, photo albums, you'll see all the pictures. I document, by the way, if you guys ever follow me on Instagram, or Facebook, I document everything because I have this thing in, in that no matter what happens in life, I'm going to be able to prove it later, right? So I know I'm going to try on certain setbacks. I mean, from high school, from me not getting my uh, uh, scholarship because they couldn't find my parents to sign for the, for the program, all the way up to bankers, everything. Everything's documented. So you, you guys can always right. go back and reference so you just don't have to take my word for it, okay? But this garage gym, she outgrew it. And from there, uh, I, I asked my wife, hey, look, it, we're back on our feet. We got about $75,000 saved up. Why don't you go find a place to go work at uh, that allows you to do this and we can get our garage back and I can get my cars back in my garage, right? And then so she did. So she ended up finding a cardio kickboxing studio that allowed her to, you know, rent out space and she can do her, her, yeah. her training out of. And okay. it's very, yeah, very uh, – very cookie cutter is just an empty warehouse with some gym equipment. And that's it, right? Okay. But that's all she needed. Temecula Marietta. Yeah, Temecula Marietta. Okay, SoCal guys, SoCal. Yep. Okay. And then from there, she went, and at that point, I sold everything out of the garage. I got rid of everything. My cars were back in the garage. Not even sixty days later, I would say between forty-five and sixty days, give or take, the gentleman that owned that studio closed his doors out of nowhere. Okay. Didn't give her pre-warning, didn't allow her to allocate her clients somewhere else, didn't allow her to go. So, so out of nowhere, everything was closed. And she comes back home and says, you know, babe, Miguel, can you, can you put the garage gym back together for me so I can keep working because I love it. This is what I love doing. She's had amazing career changing people's lives through health and fitness, right? And I, I experienced all this. So it was very fulfilling to watch and then watching her do her own thing. It was, it was awesome. So I said, look. I don't want people back at my house. Why don't you go work at, you know, these corporate gyms? You right. got our LA Fitness. And by no means do I ever, uh, when I mention these names, is belitt belittle their companies is what I'm saying. This is a reference, right? Because this is what we did. Right. And so I sent her there. She went in on the interview process. And of course, um, we didn't know how devalued the personal training industry was in corporate gyms. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, I heard um, say that. She went there. I mean, you're talking a girl that's changed people's lives, voted best personal trainer in the Inland Empire magazine, featured in magazines for what she's done and the transformation she's done. And you're telling me that you're worth minimum wage to maybe after three or four years, you can become a master trainer and make $24 an hour. Right. Well, the company is charging $65 for a half hour or $85 to $120 an hour session. That right there was dumbfounding. But at first I was like, okay, they're providing you all the equipment, all that stuff. I get it. You get the walk-ins, but you already have your book of business, so you don't need that. So she was very upset. The other aspect was that personal training is a very creative, it's almost like an art form, right? These personal trainers in these big box gyms were limited to a box. If you stepped one foot outside the box, they fired you or they said, no, this is not compliant to what yeah. we do. Yeah. And I get it. There's got to be rules and parameters and, and, and things that you need to follow. But when it comes to health and fitness, it's a very diverse industry. There isn't really no right or wrong way of doing it. It's what works best for them. 
right? So they took that out of the equation. Then they couldn't give out nutrition. Then they couldn't do anything outside the programs. So if somebody can only afford one or two days a week, what about the other three or four days? There's no management. There's no constant contact. There's no real personal training. It's called personal training for a reason, right? So there was none of that. It was all outside the picture. So she come back after three or four different interviews at three different big box gyms. I said, you know, forget it, babe. That's not your route. We're not going to go there. And at that point, you're not, you don't need to work. You're just going because you love what you do. Right. So you're not going to be worth, who's, who's, who's there to tell you what your self-worth is? Minimum wage, 24 bucks, while they're keeping 70, 80% of the revenue because yeah. they're providing you the metal, right? Right. But then at that point, I say, hey, let's Google some studios up. So we Googled some studios here locally and we found some and, and, and some that kind of do the independent contractor aspect of, uh, of, uh, of personal training. So we found some, she went and interviewed a few and the last one that she interviewed, the guy had a, a big banner of, of, you know, hiring independent trainers, join this team, all this stuff. Everybody is like, he's looking for trainers, obviously. Right. So my wife goes and interviews, come to find out the guy um, I used to compete against. So I'm an IFBB pro. Um, so I'm, uh, and I'm an elite power lifter. So we, we butted heads, you know, competing and I've always beat the guy. Right. Yeah. 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 So that, that right there created him to belittle my wife through the interview process saying, no, I'm not looking yeah. at to hire anybody. Plus we still sell memberships here. This is what we do. You have to wear our name. You're no longer going to be self-made fitness. Now your ex, I don't want to mention the company name now your ex. And at that point, my wife, comes back home on my lunch break from my real estate and, and she comes back crying. And this is the first time I see my mom, my, my wife cry throughout the whole process of interviewing because she's very tough, but right. she felt belittled. She felt insulted and me as a husband and I'm, 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 a, I'm, I'm a head case at times, right? I wanted to kill this guy. I yeah. literally wanted to show up and beat the living shit out of him. I'm sure. But that's going to do me no good. Right? So I've always, I've always learned the best way to, I don't want to say the best way to show anybody is with success. How can we do this? So at this point, I told my wife, hey, you know what? Fuck it. I'll build you a gym. So the original plan was to build a gym. Now, in the process of doing all this, I, I, I noticed that, look, like a light went on. Everything my wife came back negative with, all those problems with every commercial gym or every small studio, all those problems there's always going to be a solution for them. Why has anybody created a solution for an independent personal trainer? And how do you add value to that? Even though it's just training, how can we make it even bigger? Right. So I started jotting down all the negative things she came back with. And I'm a businessman. I look at things as like, wherever there's a problem and you can find the solution, you'll make millions. Simple yeah. as that. You know, Miguel, right? this, is, uh, this isn't like, chopping down trees or 10 X man. This is, this is engineering. That's what oh, I think. You know it's what I mean? Strategic planning, you right? know, strategically placing yourself in a position where you see a problem and you yeah. know there's a solution, but people are too fucking lazy to do it. Right. Cause it takes right. a lot of effort and it's going off of faith. You're implementing action behind the thought and the idea of not knowing what the end result's going to be. Right. So at that point I started jotting all this stuff down and by the time we decided to open the gym, we go, this is where, you know, talk about setbacks, hurdles, everything we had to overcome to be where we're at today is, is, is pretty amazing. And I, I'm glad I, I was able to document it because I knew this, I would be able to relate with a lot of people and get them to understand it's doable. Okay. So after we found the location, come, shit you not, the location we found was directly across the street from that last place you went to. Yeah, okay. yeah, with the old, with the old guy. Oh yeah, so I'm right there. I'm like, all right, real, real quick, we got how, how much time went by from when you're like, dude, we're doing our own deal to finding the location. Like, how much planning went from A to Three B? Days. Oh damn. Three, okay, quick. Three days. I didn't have much. Look at, I'm a husband, and 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 happy wife, happy life. Oh, hell I, yeah. I live by that, right? Yeah. So I said, I told my wife, I actually gave her an un, and I know real estate, okay, an unrealistic dollar per square foot in a building. I said, if you find this, babe, I will get you a gym because she wanted the garage right away. She had, you know, she had to keep her clientele going. Right. So that number I gave her, literally three days later, she found it, and she said, the day I left crying that facility, I saw this billboard there with the number saying they're leasing, and yeah. I went back to it, and that's who she called. 
Yeah. And of course, then I call and I was like, shit, you're not. That's exactly what they're offering. Actually, it was a lot less than what we, we initially intended because it was a light industrial building. It wasn't retail. Right. And I was planning on retail, right? And I was like, well, fuck it. So then at that point, I'm making things happen. I got $75,000, $80,000 in the bank. We're, we're back on our feet. My wife is killing it. She has her, her, her book of business. Oh, we can make this work, right? Then at that point, we contact the listing agent. We uh, fill out the application, and in my mind, I'm thinking nothing. We got this. We're a slam dunk, you know. We're, right. we're set. We have money in the bank now. We're this is a year later. We're we're back on our feet in a sense, and um, we fill out the application, and then I get two days later, I get an email from the broker saying they denied our application. And in my mind, I've never been rejected. My credit's always been great. I've never had not like I had Beamers. I've had all kinds of houses, big houses, rental houses, everything. So I've never been denied financing or an application to approve to get something. So I was like, well, why'd they, why, why'd they do that? My mind wasn't yet caught on to my bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. So it was like, well, your bankruptcy showed up and it's, it's, you know, within the last 12 months, they don't want to, they don't feel secure leasing it to you. I was like, can you give me the owner's number? And he was like, I, I technically can't, but what are you going to do? I was like, no, I want to personally talk to him and explain what happened. I was like, I'm not going to give up on this. I, 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 I know we can make this concept work. I have a great idea. And you don't even know yet. It's not even hit the, the market yet. It's going to be something completely game changer. It was like, he saw how much, how much passion. Like, literally, I was going to kill him if he didn't give me that number. Okay? <laughs> right. So he gave me the number. I contact him and say, hey, you know, X, you just denied my application. I would love to email you or meet you in person all the documentation showing that I've never been late on anything in my life until this bankruptcy. And I want to show you what we are currently having our savings, what we currently do as a, I'm a real estate agent here in town. So I understand your concern and the liability we can bring to your building, but I can secure you that we will not fail at what we got going on. He was like, well, the only re the only, cause he, then he, he reviewed my documents. I've never been late. I have been. Obviously every was great until 2012 um and then i you know he was like look the only the only way i will feel secure giving you this building is if you put first and last month's lease down so that those two payments and you triple your security deposit not double triple it yeah and i'm like well shit i got 75 racks i'm good it only cost me five thousand dollars to build the garage gym it's not going to be that expensive i wasn't in the equipment industry just yet yeah and so i was like you i'm golden we're good babe she wrote him a $25,000 check. We got the lease. All right, cool. How big, how big was that spot? 3,900 square feet. Okay, got it. Okay. So it was a decent size. We, we noticed that, yet again, all my homework that I did in three days, I literally, once I get a fixated to something, it's like my addictive personality. I do yeah. have an addictive personality. I, I, I don't let it go it's until gift, I get bro. all the answers and then move on. It's right? a gift, man. So that addictive personality, I, di I dissected every big box gym. I dissected every little private I dissected every CrossFit gym. I did it all. And at that point, I was like, all right, I'm good. But the thing that I did not dissect and I did not do much attention to because I was fixated on a number through Craigslist is what the cost of a build out was going to be, you know, between flooring and, and yet again, you go to my Facebook, you'll see all the pictures. I literally kid you not. If I'm going to do something, I do it right the first time. I cut no corners. Okay. I'm real big on aesthetics and appearance and a welcoming environment. You can't just do that with concrete floors and white walls, right? So I have a certain look and I'm real big on the key of marketing and being able to people to engage of what we do. Okay. So yeah, so this is, this is a self-made training facility. This is our, our, our corporate headquarters right there. Okay. Our very first location, by the time I got to the mirrors, and the floors being put in, rubber flooring, which I didn't know what the cost of rubber flooring was, and it's pretty expensive. The glue plus the quarter inch, it, I mean, it's not cheap stuff. Um, and then also, you know, painting the walls black, getting everything dialed in. By the time I got to the mirrors, I ran out of money. My 50 grand, out the door. I'm closing deals, trying to make things happen, and I was like, shit, what do we do here, right? Another setback. At that point, I told my wife, hey, we're fucked. Um, and she was like, you know, we can make this happen. I started, I sat back. I was like, all right, what do I have that I can sell? I sold my 1970 Suburban. That's how strongly we believed in this, this, this concept.
Okay. I gave up things that I was super passionate about. My cars are my cars. I, you, you take a poor kid from Riverside, like I said, it's, and I built these from the ground up. Every car that I've ever built, every classic car, even my new cars, I built them from the ground up in a sense of modifications and whatnot. So I was attached to this 1970 Suburban. It's an original three door. It's a very rare 1970 Suburban worth a lot of money. I ended up selling that. Uh, then I put my Road King. I still didn't have enough money after selling that. Then I put my Road King, which was featured in November's issue of a Hot Bikes, custom out Harley bags, sound system, the whole nine. Had to sell that to make ends meet to be able to finish that gym. Not knowing this was going to be where we're at today. So, right. so let me go. You drop 20, 25 stacks and then you start selling your, your car, your bikes. How, when did that happen? How much time went that, on? That happened after I got a rid So I had 75, 80,000, give or take. I dropped no. 25 on just the lease. The other 50,000 went to flooring, renovations, paint, because they gave me no tentative improvements. At that point, I didn't know about tentative improvements, right? So by the time I got to the mirrors, so the floors were in, the paint was up and the mirrors were up and I was down yeah. to like my last thousand bucks. What, how, how, how much time went by? Oh, dude, it was only like three weeks. Damn. Okay. You know, we only had two months of baby rent. So we had to get this place up in, in 60 days or else we have overhead and I have no, no, no equipment. So even then I had sold everything, ended up piecing everything out. And even the pictures that you see now, the, the original Murrieta location looked exactly the same, but this time it was all refurbished equipment. I wasn't willing to half-ass anything. Yes, I can go to Craigslist and buy all the equipment. You'll have some gray equipment, some white equipment, some black equipment, all multicolor, right? But there's no culture behind that. There's no emotional attachment to your facility because it looks like shit, right? So what I did is I powder coated everything. Everything was red. Everything was black. I did the graffiti. I'm from Southern California. I grew up, uh, you know, tagging. I was in the gang scene the whole nine. So I, I love that Southern California vibe. And I said, I'm very artistic. So like where our champions are self-made, that's all original graffiti. All, all, all uh, uh, it's not no, 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 uh, no stencils. It's all original. Okay? Yeah. Uh, so by then we started marketing for the people that were just like my wife, looking for independent contractors that wanted to take their passion and create a career out of it. Because in corporate world, there's no way you can, look at, you're more of a salesman than anything else. You have quotas to meet because they have quotas set for you while you only get 20%. You're making them 10,000 keeping two, okay? At that point, there's no value. Now, you're also doing an unjust service to the consumer because you're having to upsell them to make a decent living. When in reality, they don't need all that garbage, they need the real stuff that you want to give them, but guess what? You have to upsell them to get that. That's fucked up. You're changing people's lives. You're look at a personal trainer does two things in my perspective because it saved my life and it improved my wife's. Two things: a personal trainer will either save your life if you're overweight, going through obesity, going through a divorce, depression, a suicidal, whatever that case may be, personal training is a positive outlet, natural endorphins, you're naturally going to be happier when you train. Well, guess what you just did? You saved his life. That motherfucker was about to have a heart attack or a stroke because his health was shitty or he was about to go to be a type 1 diabetic, which my wife, she's type 1 diabetic. And I know how that struggle is. You might be type 2, but you're right on that verge of going type 1. Then you're really fucked. Guess what? You just helped him lose 60, 100 pounds. No longer are they even type 2 diabetic. So yep. you're saving somebody's life. And then two, you're improving somebody's life through health and fitness. If it wasn't through wrestling and my, and my gym, you know, me loving the gym so much, I probably would have ended up in prison, dead, or, or, or who knows, right? Also, you may have a high school kid that wants to play varsity ball. He's going, you know, from his middle school going into the transition of high school, and he wants to play varsity ball because he wants to turn pro. He wants to go to college. So get 10 pounds. What are the mom and dads going to do? Hire a coach? And this coach helps him put on 10 pounds. Now he's playing varsity. Next thing he was playing college ball. Next thing he got drafted to the NFL. How in the fuck did you not just improve that kid's life? Oh, hell yeah. Right? Yeah, or you're a competitor. Or you're in that sense uh, 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 competing in jiu-jitsu, bodybuilding, whatever it is. You're progressing. You're, you're doing something positive with your body. It's not just exterior. Internally, I mean, everything from emotional, from, your, from spiritually to, to mentally, everything. Personal training is more than just the exterior. So why should these guys get devalued, right? So I created this concept for personal trainers to excel as 
personal trainers and create a career out of something they love doing. So, now, so Miguel, I'm sorry, you're on a roll, man, but let me interrupt real yeah. quick. So he has a completely different business model. So we know about the Fit Body Boot Camps, the F45s. We have clients and students that are, you know, F45 Fit Body Boot Camp. What Miguel does is he sells his franchises, you know, they're, they're built out, business in a box, but that owner is actually the owner of the facility that leases space to independent PTs. So right. now that space is a freaking home, a hub for like 40 freaking businesses. So that's like just a totally different model. We know about that, but Miguel, that's what he does. And, and the thing is that you have to remember, anybody can, anybody can build a gym. We get that. Anybody can put equipment inside of a facility, and we get that. I've studied people that do that. The problem is that they, they, they tend to forget the culture that they need to develop to create the revenue that they want, right? People want to be associated with something positive. People want also value over the dollar. I, for the first time, because I failed in my real estate brokerage, I understood that one, my pride and ego is gone. Look, at I'm an IFBB pro. I could have called him Miguel Aguilar's gym by IFBB pro Miguel Aguilar, whatever. Autumn could have called it Autumn Fitness. She could have called it Aguilar Fitness. But that you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't relate with that. I don't want somebody building my name. I want them to build their name. That's why right. we called it self made. You know, we trademarked it. We ended up building something that is considered to be a platform for the elite of the elite that want to really take their business to a whole nother level. And it doesn't just stop there. Look, when you come as an entrepreneur with us, you can only have so many hours throughout the day, right? You can only train so many hours throughout the day. And time is the most valuable thing on this earth. It's worth more than money. So if I can teach you how to leverage both, which I do through my entrepreneurship skill sets that we provide through Self Made Academy, but we teach these trainers how to develop an online business, how to develop their one-on-one -on -one business where it's created to benefit not only the consumer, but their time. And reap most of my trainers, a good, I would say 60 to 70% are over six figures. The and ones that are not are the ones that are not implementing every tool we give them. Because put it this way, they're not my employees. They're my partners in business. Right. So my, as my partner in business, I give them the tools and resources to be successful. We created an online nutrition app, which is, which is managed by 27 dietitians. So it legally protects them to give nutrition guidance to the mm -hmm. consumer through our app. Our app is free to download, but you can't use it unless you hire one of my trainers. Yeah. So now when you have, especially like, I don't know if some of you guys are online trainers, take this to heart. The industry is fucked up. It's fraud. You got people giving out templates for $50 templates, $10 templates, and everybody's eating the same shit. Yeah. I can't eat what you eat. This is just plain and simple. We all are different. We, our bodies are different in every way possible. The way we consume food, the way we do things, we react completely different. So how's that same template that they just sold me for 10 bucks and then you for 10 bucks, how's that going to work the same? And some of it's malnourished, straight out, like you're, you're pretty much killing yourself, right? So how do we change the game with that? I saw that. We didn't have that in the very beginning when we opened our first location. But yet again, I'm an eyes, ears. I, these are my partners. We communicate a lot. I get to see what the industry is. I'm involved with Ursa. I'm involved with the industry. I own a manufacturing company that develops all our gym equipment. I own mm. multiple companies that help this one business. Okay. Yeah. What we did, we created a nutrition app. But how do we protect them? You work with dietitians. Why 27? Right? Well, shit, dude. There's all kinds of food. There's all kinds of nutrition plants. Paleo, gluten-free, plant-based, vegan, whatever it is. Type 1 diabetics, heart conditions. We want to know everything, and these dietitians can do it. So we have every source to feed off of, and they're working one-on-one -on -one with these dietitians through our app to now they can give to the consumer. How much more professional is that than giving to somebody an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document of all of this protocol? Probably you doesn't exist, man. It's it premium. Doesn't exist. At that point, the value is better than the, 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 the content, right? Then at that point, we created also a, a licensing agreement with the training software company. This training, we have on our server, we have endless amount of space. A trainer can upload all their videos onto our app and now train the client or the, uh, the consumer through virtual training. Yeah. And it's yeah, not so much Joe Schmo, even though we have those, we have endless amount of videos that they can use if they want to in the beginning. But right. we coach them to say, hey, 
add the value. If I hire you as my trainer and I'm paying you $500 a month for online training, why should I have John Doe tell me how to do a bench press? Right. So right. we put these guys on video. We have a videographer, a photographer on staff. Like we built a multi-million dollar company on Instagram. Simple as that. You go to my Instagram account, uh, Instagram account which is Self Made Family Inc. That's my personal account, Self Made Family Inc. And then my uh, business one for the corporate headquarters, self-made training facility. Okay, follow those two the, accounts. It's in the comments, and you'll see what I'm talking about. What's that? We drop it in the comment section for you, for these Perfect. guys. Oh, go. So, and then at that point, also look that training app. Merge it with the nutrition app. Now you're a full-on online trainer. So imagine giving this to the consumer. You give them a seven-day regimen. You know, a workout regimen a cardio regimen, a supplementation, because you're the expert, remember that. And then you also give them a, uh, uh, a mentorship coaching regimen out of it. This is a personal relationship you guys are building with the consumer. So you're coaching them, so why not include that? Hey, once a week I'm giving you an affirmation to follow. Once a week I'm gonna give you a motivational talk or at least guide you or talk to you of what's going on for that week or every other week, depending on your time. How much more valuable is that because now they're able to relate with you, you know, communicate with you everything they want from you and hire you for a premium dollar. Instead of giving somebody a $50 nutrition app that, or a $50 uh, template nutrition, now you can charge 500 bucks. You've just quadrupled your income with one hour because of the value. So we provide that to all our trainers, all our staff has it, all our independent contractors. But the problem is, this is the, the, the hurdle that we've always overcome because of the trainings that we provide. But when you take an employee mindset and put them into entrepreneurship, it's completely different. I'm not telling you you have to show up nine to five. I'm not telling you you have six sessions today for 12 bucks an hour. Right. So you have to put in the work. But I tell these guys, I can take you to the water. I can't make you drink it. Even though I would love to shove your face right in it because it tastes amazing. Right. You know, so that's where we do ourselves different from everybody else. When we created a, a, a platform that has already been around for ages, look, independent contracting studios have been around for years, but no one's ever tried to perfect it. And that's my mission. There's a problem. I'm going to create the solution with value. There is no competition to what we do because in all reality, we're evolving every year. We're adding even better and better systems. We're also evolving academies. We have self-made academy. We're an accredited certification course. NASM reached out to us. We partnered with them. And now we give free accredited certification courses as long as you join our team. Damn. I want your continued education to be free. I don't want you to have that extra burden of having to pay 2,500, 500 bucks, whatever that case may be, to educate yourself to be a better trainer. Because guess what? If you're making more money, I have a loyal, committed trainer for life. Why would you want to go anywhere else for a low overhead? Because I've had people that start with us and they say, oh, I'm going to now build my own studio. I say, hey, all power to you. I love it. Go for it. I'm never going to discourage somebody of doing something on their own. But six months later, a year later, guess what happens? They close their doors and they're back. You, you know, you're talking about something. Because of the things we offer for sex. But the, that, problem, the problem you solved, bro, was what your wife was facing when she was trying oh. to do it. Big time, dude. That's the problem. I that and I had to run with it. And the thing is, people were too scared to because they didn't. Look, yeah, I'm in the people business. That's what I do. I get excited talking about this because I am in the people business. I come from nothing. So when I can see other people making a lot of money doing and something we've created together, come fuck on. you know how fulfilling that is? It's the best in the world. Not only do they get to put food on their table, but they're actually living. I tell people, hey, look, when you come to us, I don't want you to live paycheck to paycheck like you're doing right now. I want you to live. You want to upgrade a car? Upgrade your car. You want to buy a house this year? Buy a house. I'm going to teach you how to do all that. And then yeah. guess what? If you want to travel the world, set your schedule up to travel. I tell all my people, like entrepreneurs out there, always say, oh, I'm seven days a week, 24-7, 24-7. Bullshit. I have a family at home. I'm a, I'm a father and husband first, right? I set my schedule Monday through Friday. I don't work weekends. That's luxury. But I put in the work first. I get everything done within those days. So if you're in, the, in, that, that, in that sense where, you know, money doesn't motivate you, but time does, fuck it. This is a platform for you. So that's what we teach these guys. You know, we, we, help, we help them understand their true potential and something that they're so gifted in, you know? Yeah, my dude. He's got that SLFMD's hoodie. Who, who are we looking at? The Tyler. Oh, oh make yourself yeah. made, bro. <laughs> we have a couple self-made cats, Miguel. Oh, dope. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so they know what I mean, you know, and it, it, look it. It's hard to digest that somebody really does give a fuck. That really cares because it's, it's a very, it's a very rare thing for people to do. You know, they're always chasing money. So they see you as an object to get more money. Corporate worlds have done that. You have a corporate manager or a gym manager only boosting you to make more sales so they can get a higher bonus check. So the more time they give you, the more money they make while you sacrifice everything on the table and you get the, the crumbs, right? With us, imagine having somebody come to you, try to motivate you to understand the beautiful thing of entrepreneurship as a personal trainer and continually enforce positive and, and, and tools, systems, everything to be successful and I don't get a piece of that pie. You made 150 grand this year? Dope. I still got my flat feet per month, that's it. You made only 50,000? No problem, we'll get you to 100. Yeah. We still keep coming back and my responsibility as an entrepreneur and as an owner of this franchise is to be able to give as many tools and systems for these guys to be successful. You know, and that's your self-made academy. Well, that's a lot of academy, all that stuff. So we created that. We also have obviously our nutrition app and then our self-made academy doesn't just stop at personal training or coaching, certification, powerlifting certifications, anything that provides becomes of certifications. We understood that we're bringing on typical people that have not never owned a business before or owned a business, but just didn't know how to run it. So we right. teach them entrepreneurship skill set courses. These okay. skill sets, they have them, they don't, but they're able to at least apply them and see what they shine in, right? Everything from accounting, marketing, retention, uh, communications is huge. Yep. Look, I'm 38 years old. I'll be 38 in August. I'll hold on to 37. So I'm 37, all right? Back when I got into entrepreneurship in 2000 to 2004, nothing was around. MySpace came out in 2004. Facebook came right after that and Instagram. Everything prior to that was word of mouth and communication. Yep. Our younger generation, millennials, dude, I love you guys. Some people say, oh, you guys are lazy. No, you guys have a, a skill set in social media, skill set in communicating virtually, right? But don't forget that skill set on the human interaction. You know, right. that's why we created our apparel company, our own SLFMD family. You know, the apparel company that we created is to piggyback off a self-made training facility. Right. It's indirect marketing. Which feeds into the culture. A hundred percent. Who doesn't yeah. want to be a part of the family, right? They love rocking that, man. They love rocking that. I see those cats all over social media. Right. Right? You know, and, and, and what it does, it creates a person to ask, hey, what is SLFMD? Oh, it's a private personal training that I own. I'm over here in, in Corona. This is my business card. Do you ever need help? Let me know. You're planting seeds. Everybody should be farming every day. Yeah. Every day. That's where communication comes a key. You know, just looking at somebody in the eye is a skill set. When it you're is. communicating with them, you know how yeah. many young people I have interview and they're like, they don't know what to do with their hands or face or anything. Yeah. But on social media, when they typed out this long resume, dude, I, this guy's gold. Right. And I'm like, whoa, what happened to that guy? Right. Completely different. Right. So we teach those skill sets. Right. And we understand that everybody learns differently. So we have an online course as well on the back end. So everything is reachable through our back end system that gets launched in May. So we understood that training is it's key to success. And what I mean, not, not personal training, training the mind, right. the, heart, the physical, everything, everything as a whole as an entrepreneur is overwhelming. Right. So we ended up creating a module system on our back end, on our website, gets launched this May. We invested a lot of money into this thing, okay? Where it's an interactive system to be able to train and onboard all our franchises and trainers. All our trainers will now have a login and password to be able to come into the system and, and onboard them. Everything from social media marketing training that is interactive. They're gonna have to answer questions as they're reading and listening to the videos. And, and Miguel, now they have to start all over again. Miguel, what happens is with and that dude, the before they even start with us, the message is the same. When yeah, somebody exactly. goes through a like that, it doesn't get it a, doesn't it's get not diluted. It, it, yeah, there's no exactly. telephone, right? It's not right. that telephone where it goes from one person to the next to the next. No. And right. everybody streamlined exactly the same. The right. difference is how they apply it. Because right. I tell everybody, look, you don't want to be Miguel Aguilar. By no means. Don't copy me, but mimic. Mimic the, the, the actions I took to be where I'm at today so you can do the same thing. 
Come on. I'm no different. I don't have a college education. I barely graduated high school. I have no family. I, I couldn't qualify for a loan if I, if I wanted to back then because of, of the bankruptcy. So literally no handouts. When everybody has these hurdles, don't cry over spilled milk. There's amazing people on this planet that have created amazing things and done amazing things out of nothing, right? A personal trainer has the same, 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 same path. They just have to take it. You know, the beautiful thing about the franchise that I have, a good majority of them sold to my trainers. have been with me since day one. And now they're doing what I do in their platform. Each, each facility has anywhere from 35 to 50 personal trainers, anywhere paying from 900 to $1,500 a month, depending on the location and the demographics. And then we have a retail store inside every one of our locations. Hold on. It, it cut out. It, it cut out my build. It cut out. Did you say that pe a lot of your people started out as independent PTs that are now yep. franchise owners? Yep. That's strong, that dude. That's a lot, man. You know, and they've been with me since day one, dude. They, they believed in my dream as much as I believed in mine. Yeah. You know, and, and now they have the, 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 the leverage to motivate other trainers to do the same and now get financially rewarded for it. There's nothing wrong with making money. I love money. Why? Because it allows me to do these amazing things that I'm doing now. Right. Before, if this would have been handed to me in my early uh, 20s, early 30s, late 20s, early 30s, I probably would have blew it all again. But having that banker seen aspect humbled my ass in, in a big, big way. I used to lead my, my team with pride and ego. And what I mean by that is when I was talking to all my real estate, I had about 200 agents, by the way. It was a big office. Okay. Every time I go into the meetings, the monthly meetings, and I was actively selling real estate with them, I'd go in there. Well, if I got 12 escrows a month, you can do one. If yeah. I, 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 everything was me. Mm. And guess what? It collapsed. When another company came in and tried to, to, and basically, uh, provided what I provided, they all left. There's no loyalty, no retention. I learned from that. And now look, I've built such a strong company. There's people trying to copy us in all reality right? Try to almost have the same look, the same colors, no same name, but you know, try to do what we do. Yeah, yeah you can see it. Them close their doors. The thing is that we do different is we provide so much on the back end that people don't quite understand. And I'm free to disclose this because look, in all reality, this could be an opportunity for you or it can be something that you guys can do within your own studios or your own uh, uh, training facilities, right? And you as a PT, just in, in general, if you can make a lot of money doing what you love, dude, you're helping other people. So I'm, I'm willing to share because I want you to help more people. Every person that you come in contact, you're saving a life. It's better than selling any supplement program or anything of that nature. When you're helping another human being be better in this world, dude, that's, that's amazing work. Like, how many people do you have on your team, on your corporate team, your in-house? So my in-house, you'll be surprised. I only got five. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Okay. We do everything virtual, dude. We, we figured virtual? out the market. Okay. But you have people remote on, on your team? Not, not your franchise owners, franchisees, yeah. but your team. That, that's yeah. Fine. My corporate, or like my uh, corporate headquarters, we have 50 trainers here. Okay. I got you. Yeah, but, but working at corporate, we have my CEO, which is Dean Romero. He's my right hand man. If you don't follow him, follow him. He's, he's legit as it gets. Uh, okay. he's helped me build this company in a sense of, of all our, our, he's, he's an experienced trainer at a corporate gym to, you know, making his first hundred thousand dollars with us as an independent contractor. And then from yeah. there, I saw skill sets that he had that he definitely needed to be on my team building these companies. So he's our, our CEO. He went from our manager to general manager to now, uh, my CEO. Okay. Uh, and then there's uh, Charlene. She does all our back end. Amazing. That's actually Dean's wife. She does all our, our contracts, everything with our legal team, everything on the sense of, of, of running everything on the back end when it comes to our paperwork. Then we have my wife, who's, a, you know, the founder. She's my primarily just, you know, the person that really kind of sparked this whole thing. I just took right. my business aspect into it and, and ran with it, you know. Uh, and then I, obviously myself, and then we have our accounting team. Damn, small. Okay. Yeah. It, you look at it. When developing a team – if you're, doing, if you're doing it strategically, you don't need hundreds of people on your team, 20 people, 30 people. You need a trust in five to 10 people that are able to do their job 100% as if it was their own company. Right. And at that point, it leaves the owner, myself, to go do what I do best. Right. And that self franchises and get other people understanding our concept because our numbers just don't lie. It's a very easy concept to follow, but there's a lot of things on the back end that I need to explain that helps that revenue come in. So when you when you're when you're recruiting or you're bringing people on your team or you're dealing with vendors, yeah, like who do you look like? Who do you mess with? Who do you like? What, okay. what 
traits do they have? So this is, this is the thing. With all my vendors, one, I deal with them directly, and I look for companies with reputable, reputable companies. Andy Frisella is one of my good, good friends. I just sold mm-hmm. him my, my Harley Davidson. It's getting shipped out. He's the owner of First Form, a $200 plus million dollar company. Yeah. My Rolodex, okay? I went to every manufacturer that comes with our supplement companies and our retail. I go direct. I don't go to a distributor. I want to build the relationship with them. It took me months of DMs, calls, hangups, everything, because these guys are high profile people. They don't want to fuck with little guys, especially when I only had two locations. Right. 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 But as we're building, getting that. So I, I, I mess with them directly and I look for reputable people that have the same work ethic as I do, if not better. I work for, I, look, it, I'm going to continue to be a student. Do I know it all? No, I'll be lying to you if I did. But I'm a, I'm a student. So I'm constantly evolving and sharpening my tools to get better and better. I, I talk about chasing perfection, right? Knowing damn well I'll never be perfect in this world. But when you're chasing perfection, guess what you're doing? You're evolving. You're growing. And if you're growing, you're bringing in amazing things into the platform that allow you to elevate to a whole nother level. Never be content. Just right. when you got it made, someone can come in and take it all from you. Right. So how do you level up? How do you progress? And health and fitness, you guys all know, it's always evolving, always changing. If you're staying stagnant, what is that going to do? You you're you're going to become extinct, man. Yeah, you'll be a dinosaur, bro. So, so you, you said be a student, always progress. Who, like, who are you watching out there right now? And like, who's influencing you? Like, like, so Andy Purcell is always influencing you. Yeah, he's he, dope. He looked at Grant Cardone, real estate. Right. When it comes to real estate, Grant Cardone's a man. Uh, you know, Tony Robbins has always been a fan since I was a kid. Okay. Uh, who else? Uh, you still doing your development? You still listening to your, your tapes and audios? And Oh, I read, dude. Yeah, yeah, right now I'm reading. Uh, so if, if you guys want to read a good book on how to lead your team, is uh, um, uh, Extreme Ownership. Extreme Ownership is by far one of the best books I've read when it comes to entrepreneurship and, and leading your team and understanding that it starts and ends with you. Everything starts and then there's no bad teams, there's bad leaders. Got it. Okay, there, I'm, we're getting a couple of questions. Someone wants to know, uh, let me see, who is it? Mark. He said, any plans to open up an ATL in Atlanta? Dude, we actually had two inquiries last week on ATL. So with ATL, we're definitely, look, we're going to be in everywhere in the United States. There's no doubt about it. We actually had to stop selling franchises for a little bit because of um, we were growing so fast. This is where, yet again, my pride and ego was in check because, of course, I want to make oh, hell yeah. a million. For everyone we sell, it's nuts, right? So I want to make all the dough. I was like, hell yeah. But I knew strategically it would fail us. We would collapse within a year because we don't have all our tools and systems in line. But gotcha. ATL is next. Dallas is next. Uh, we're, we can sell anywhere in the United States. And then we're finally working on our very first international deals, Mexico and uh, uh, Australia. Okay, there's a follow-up. Mark Turner again. Uh, this has been an idea I've been looking for. I'm in Lawrenceville. Dude, hit him up, man. Hit him up on uh, social. Hit him up on IG. Hit me up, man. I Let me get that commission, you, Miguel. Down. What's that? Let me get that commission, player. For that. Yeah, there you go. Oh, God, yeah, 10%. <laughs> hey, hey, so do you ever turn cats down? It's not the money. I, I, I look at. I, I could have fit in the culture, maybe. I could have had fifty of these already, and I and I've turned down a good handful. And the reason for it, we 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 we're in the people business, bro. If you're not a people person and you're just yeah. looking at this financially, don't get me wrong. It's very lucrative. You'll make a lot of fucking money doing this. And dude, I get paid to lift weights. You right. know, I get paid to motivate other people to make more money. How not, how can that not be fulfilling? Right? So it, it's, it, it's, it's very rewarding financially, emotionally, physically, and, 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 and spiritually, but not everybody's cut out for this job. You know, I can't, I can't take somebody's investment knowing that they will fail within a year. I just can't sleep at night. I won't, I won't do it. So yes, we've turned people down, but our qualifications are also very, very detailed. You're having a one-on-one conversation with me and I I don't go off of resumes because resumes can do so much. Right. I go off of what people and how I can generally get the genuine person in front of me and really get to know them because I'm building relationships. These guys are my extended family. I tell every franchise owner that signs with me because our franchise agreement is for seven years and they can renew for another seven as much as they want. Right. But they're attached to my hip for the next seven years. Right. You so, know, that's so my extended family. Are you, are you pretty quick 
to gauge if this is going to work or if this is not going to oh, work? Oh, yeah, dude. I, that's another skill set that I have. 30 seconds, a minute, maybe two? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, man. I, I have more questions. I want to open it up yeah. in a second. Um, dude, tell me about – and this is a lot, man. I know – I used to – I come from GC's office. I used to be at Grant's office. Yep. And, you know, culture, bro, is like, it's, it's, it, that's it, you know? Yeah. How the hell, dude, do you instill this culture? Because I see people rocking the self-made. They have the shirts. They have, they, they, they have it. They, they like it. Like, how the hell have you done that, man? Like, what's the secret? So when I, when, when I tell you I study and I, 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 I honestly have such an addictive personality that I, I don't let things go very easily. And I, I look at every flaw, every company that had success, and then they started dying out. I'll use a prime example. Uh, and yet again, it's not to be little guys. So I don't want you thinking I'm putting somebody underneath us. I just observe and I look at a problem and how can I make it better? Okay. We had a huge, huge response from CrossFit, right? And with CrossFit, they had such a cult-like following that was admirable. I'm like, dude, these guys are like, CrossFit or die, CrossFit or die. You walk into a box, if you're thinking about doing a regular pull-up, you're, you're wrong, you know? And, 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 and they built such a good culture that they had huge success. Now, the problem, though, is not everybody is in CrossFit. Somebody has a different idea, a different thought of what health and fitness is for them. So I opened up our demographic. I really cater to having uh, all of us be brothers and sisters in a sense. That's why we call it a family. Right. You like CrossFit? Great. We have it. You like boxing? Great. We have it. You yeah. like bodybuilding? Great. I got it. Anything you want to do, we have besides the large group trainings like boot camps and things of that nature, because I think when personal training this craft is small groups or one-on-one, -on -one. that's the only yeah. way this works because yeah. it's an attention to detail type of craft. It's not putting everybody in a group and in a sardine group like sardine can and, and, and stuff them in there and try to get as much as you can out of it. No, you know, if someone wants to be involved in the sport or somebody wants to do something for themselves personally, personal training is one-on-one -on -one or small groups. Right. So I, I understood what that culture needed. It needed an open demographic and not a stereotype. You know, you don't have to have tattoos and buff to come to our gym. You can be an 82 year old man doing deadlifts. We're cool with that. You want to do calisthenic scale? We're cool with that. And we embrace it and we motivate people to do it. You know, oh, no, okay, go. That's your corner over there. You go do that. No, right. it's embrace. You walk into our facilities, you don't even know what type of gym we are. And that's what I wanted people to understand. We offer it all. So that culture to get these guys to love what we do is because we are, we truly love them and they love us. And we truly show them the possibilities of success through entrepreneurship, through our culture, you know? Right. And, and the beautiful thing is, it's like, you don't have to take my word for it. Talk to my guys. Right. That's the best, best word of mouth is, is the best. These guys are going to spread the love. And then guess what? We have athletes. We call everybody athletes, by the way. We don't call them clients. We don't call them customers. These are athletes. Mm. They're showing up to perform. Right. Okay? That validates them. That shows them, hey, this guy, he's calling me an athlete? Oh, shit. You know? Yeah, they're empowered. They're empowered, yeah. man. They're so empowered. Giving them. And that's what you want. So that's how we built our culture, dude. And building that. a culture that has no boundaries. My, my man, Tim Phillips in Tennessee, I'm going to go visit Tim Phillips next week, jumping on plane and, and hanging out with him for half a week. He says, what kind of population density is normal, normally required for self-made franchise to be successful? Well, that's a beautiful thing. We have every concept, we have every module possible. So our entry level is a 4,000 square foot facility that can cater up to 35 trainers in an open demographic of popula uh, population does not have to have a certain parameter because it's a smaller unit. And as long as there's three to four corporate gyms within a 10 mile radius, it's a good location. So we don't really base it off just numbers because the gyms have already done some of our homework. And most of these gyms cater to six to 10 trainers per location. Plus that's not including all the small mom and pop locations, right? So for us to get 35 people that want to make a career out of what they love doing, it's very feasible and it's an entry level. Then we go all the way up to 10,000 square feet. That was a bigger population like Orange County, uh, New Jersey, or Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona location is 10,200 square feet. Before he even opened his doors, he already had 38 trainers out of his 35. He's going to hit 50 for that location. And it's ample space in the way we lay it out. So I also own Collusion Fitness products. 
So Collusion Fitness Products, I also now manufacture all the gym equipment. All the gym equipment is catered to every shape and size. I've created some pretty unique pieces. If you go to my Instagram, you'll see them um, that no one has. So we have an open, dem uh, an open geographic of being able to place these in any city, any state, but we're going to advise you, hey, 10,000 is not going to be feasible for you. 5,000 is based on these numbers and why. So I use my real estate background for the majority of those decisions. Man, you, your, your businesses, all the ones that you just mentioned, man, they're all symbiotic. They all, they all push each other. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, Caleb Week, same here. I'm in San Diego. I want to start training at the Point Loma location. I'm currently getting taught by MPTI by Mark Rodriguez, one of your trainers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, guys, you have questions for Miguel before we cut him loose? Questions, comments. Tim Phillips, how do you market to trainers to attract ones that have the right stuff? So that's a beautiful thing, yet we also give the benefit of the doubt. We understand that a lot of these trainers don't have the experience in independent training. That's why we developed Self-Made Academy. And, and we spent hours and thousands of dollars developing the system and being able to help them create this platform with us. And those guys, we give them that one-on-one -on -one mentorship with each one of the franchise owners. So uh, franchise owners can manage 35 to 50 trainers easily through our systems and the software that we have and can mentor these guys to really be in an entry level to be able to start with us and be able to really make this into a business. So with us, we recruit a lot through social media. I've built a multi-million dollar company off of Instagram in all reality. I'm not going to sugarcoat and say I did this and this. No. And I use no, no high profile athletes. I didn't use the, the high influencers to build our company. If anything, they reached out to us to be able to use our facilities and we give them the opportunity to film and do their content there. Right. We back and we built the relationship with them. Like right? we encourage them. We appreciate them taking us as a consideration for a facility for them. And it, it, it spider webs. It basically expands and expands. There's no reach. Social media is the key to success in anything that you're doing right now when it comes to this type of concept or any studio, you have to be able to develop your culture online as well, not just one-on-one. -on -one. You, you guys put the swag in personal oh, training. Oh, you like, can work our stuff in and out of the facility. It's a lifestyle brand. We also teach entrepreneurship. When people are making money, they're super happy, dude. Dude, I got, I got one more question for me. One more question for me. So you said something in a podcast and you said, dude, it's, it's kind of crazy, but I could see what I'm going to be doing like in two years. Mm -hmm. you, it, it's, it's like your vision, right? And, yeah. and it, it pretty much, you just, it comes to fruition, you know? Yeah. What's the vision, man, two years? So the vision is to be at 50 locations and not more. Uh, we're definitely going to be in at least 10 states, if not more. Um, I'm going to help and develop over 2,500, uh, 20, uh, 2,500 trainers within that reach, uh, develop careers and, and really help individuals uh, strive through success through health and fitness in an industry that can be very negative at times too. So I want to change the game. I want to disrupt the industry. I want to show people that if you, you put value first over the dollar, you will be wealthy. You know, you make a lot of money while helping other people. So my vision is to grow as big as I possibly can. There's no end reach um, and, and, and be one of those guys that led the path for other people to do their own thing eventually, whether it be a franchise of ours or their own. You know, that's a beautiful thing. We encourage it. We don't look at anybody as competition. We see the value of what this can do for other people that may start with us as personal trainers. Now they're running their own CPA office. So now they're running their own real estate office. We just don't know. And my, my, my goal is to disrupt the industry and bring value back to personal training. And that's what we're doing. You know, creating a headache for these guys that think they can take advantage of personal trainers and their craft. My man, my man. So, so guys, this is, you know, the head of a freaking huge movement right now. You know, I reached out to Miguel. I, met, I ran into Miguel at a, at a MMA event and I, I reached out to him. I was like, Hey man, I got these, you know, PTs. I have these gym owners, I have these studio owners. Could you come on, dude, to bless these guys with some, with some gems? So this guy's like super generous. His first response was like, Mike, anything I can do to help, dude, I'm going to go there and help these guys, man. And he's here. You know, you got people in the back. People are we're like, fine. this guy is a guy in, in big demand. You know, one of, uh, one of our clients, he, I think you ran into him today, Van, the PT. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was, he's supposed to be here today. 
Oh, no way. Yeah, man. That's my boy, man. It's a good guy right there. But, uh, Miguel, dude, I just want to speak for the group, man. Thank you, bro. We really appreciate you, man. I'm going I'm to give you a holler in a second. But, guys, go follow this guy. This is a really good guy, dude. And he's on the freaking – whatever he's done, he's, he's, he's on the rise even more so. So, Miguel, we really appreciate you, bro. The, the best way to reach me, guys, is through social media, through Instagram. If you guys DM me some questions or whatever, because I know sometimes people don't want to ask, and, and you may have something down the road, don't hesitate to reach out. Whatever I can do to help you guys, I'm here for you guys 100%. Um, you guys have the capability of really controlling your own life. It starts and ends with you. It always does. Try to chase perfection knowing that you'll be perfect. Fuck the motivation aspect of it. Or be inspired to really take action. Motivation is a feeling. Everybody gets excited after these events or these calls, and, and they're like, oh, shit, all right, now I'm going to do it. But really fucking do it. Take action behind the thought and the idea because in all reality, it starts and ends with you. No one else is going to fucking do it for you. No one's going to give you the, the you know the plate they're not gonna do it you want to eat go hunt come on thank you Miguel. appreciate you man all right guys 